The piece Modern Rome, Campo Vicino, was painted by Joseph Mallard William Turner, a British artist born in 1775, creating art until his death in 1851. Turner's father had encouraged his artistic talents from a young age and even displayed his art in his shop. In December of 1789, Turner started school at the Royal Academy of Art at the age of 14. He then went on to Pleister Academy, where he drew from casts of ancient sculpture. He worked with architects and architectural draughtsmen, including Tomas Malton, who he considered a master of art. To pay for his studies, Turner did several jobs which utilized his talents, including landscape and antiquarian topography, using watercolors for exhibition and sale or reproduction in prints and books. This work contributed to his advancements in education. After finding value in sketching on the spot during 1791, he began touring during the summer and working in the studio during winter months until the post-revolutionary wars in Europe, which put his travels to a halt. He had his first showing at the Royal Academy from 1790, showcasing his watercolor works until 1796. He then went on to feature work that exhibited history, literature, and myth, which challenged the style of old masters, making extreme advances in his technique. During the late 1700s and early 1800s, he began doing commissioned work and was soon to be recognized as a prodigy of his generation. The piece Campo Vicino, meaning cow pasture, was created in England in 1839. The piece features oil on canvas and shows the eternal city from Turner's memory from a trip he had taken 10 years prior. We view this piece with light from the sun setting behind the Capitoline Hill from the right and we see shimmering light from the moon towards the left. The gallery explains churches and ancient monuments in and around the Roman Forum seem to dissolve in iridescent light shed by the moon rising at the left and the sun setting off to the right. We see the city's residents continue with their daily tasks with a broken city all around them. Among them are images of classical, renaissance, and baroque Rome, some in ruins. Turner painted through a romantic lens and he was known for his coloration in imaginative landscapes. The Getty emphasizes how the prismatic palette and sparkling light effects exemplify Turner at his most talented. The gallery describes how the painting evokes the sublimity of Rome and augments the notion that Rome is a place for the artist's imagination. I believe this piece offers insight into Rome's history by highlighting the lives of those who inhabited it from the lens of an artist. Turner was known to be a recluse, and his vision of this image, painted over a decade later, we can see his idea of the progression of Rome, emphasized through coloration. Having dealt with his mother's mental illness as a young child and turning to art for expression, I believe the ruins around the people who live in the city resemble that life must go on even as things feel chaotic around us. Edgar Degas was a French Impressionist, although he identified as a realist who served a large role in the shaping of fine art. His early art was inspired by old master paintings, eventually graduating to his own style consisting of fine line drawing. Beginning with historical paintings, he then began painting modern life pieces. He was a part of the original six Impressionists participating in exhibitions between 1874 and 1886. A lot of his art featured natural light, nature, and the outdoors, primarily focusing on specific positions and gestures, as we see in this piece here, unofficially titled Waiting. Thought to be created in 1882, but the exact date is unknown, it was created during a time where Degas was creating and selling a lot of art. The piece features several techniques which further away don't appear to be significant, but up close we can see the unusual technique. We see these colors on the dancer's right cap with the purple bluish streak, and we see it again with the dark red along her hairline. The dancer's counterpart has pops of blue on her hand and in the palm of her hand. We see deep colors of pastel within the woman in black, and it's clear that this was intentional by the artist. We see the same method on the dancer's tutu with the deep green and blues. The gallery states this was partially due to the utilization of the color of the canvas, which has changed over time. This technique of using the color of the canvas uses it as a middle tone to create depth and contrast, which we can see clearly in the empty space around the characters, specifically in the floorboards. It is said that Degas used a rag to blend the pastels together to create a softness we see on both the dancer and her counterpart. I believe the notion behind this piece was to provide an emotional response of relatability to the viewer. We've all been in this slumped over position, almost showing defeat. 
It's a humane response to the defeat, and the sensation echoes throughout the piece. Simply put by the gallery, two women seated on a bench in a bare room. Of course, we know there's much more to this painting than that simplicity. The body language of the piece can be found to be very relatable. The angle in which we view the women shows its intimacy and makes the face around them unknown through its barren nature. Several of Degas' work features ballet dancers, but this one is different as the dancer is stationary rather than in motion like in some of his other work. It appears the dancer could be injured as her focus is on her ankle and her arm holds it. In contrast to his other works where the ballerinas are viewed on stage displaying elegance and grace, we view the dancer from the lens of a human-like presence expressing fatigue. The other figure in the piece mirrors the same slumped over position, but is dressed in all black, not a figure we see throughout his work often. Her hand also mirrors the ballerina, lightly holding onto her umbrella rather than her ankle. I wonder if this fatigue in the figure is meant to mirror the ballerina, to show there is a darkness and humanness to dancers, and that their lives aren't always as colorful and whimsical as when we see them perform.